separation, a born-again experience when you change your mind and genuinely in your heart to accept His rescue plan. You surrender your life to Him and let Him be the master of your life. When this happens, God redeems you. He restores you. He empowers you with the indwelling Holy Spirit with all the spiritual gifts and blessings for His mission. He promises that He will be with you forever. How do you know if you are saved, set apart for Jesus' mission? You continue to have an abiding relationship with Him every day. This is evidenced by the indwelling Holy Spirit continuing His work to convict and changing you to be more like Jesus each day. How does He do that? He uses the Bible, the Word of God to lead you to repentance to change to be more and more like Him each day. You are not alone, God uses the family of God. He blesses you with other true worshipers to train and encourage you in the local church and in accountability spiritual growth groups. In wisdom, we call that M, meaningful fellowship. That is the vertical relationship with God and the horizontal relationship of other same like-minded true worshipers with the intention of sharing spiritual growth in order to be on mission for Jesus. Meaningful fellowship, this involves one-on-one -on -one or at best with a couple of other true worshipers. Yes, the local church is the family of families with many of these meaningful fellowships. The rest of wisdom is the stewardship, the outreach, and discipleship. These are God's grace, His gifts given for the ministry, the mission God calls and sends us out for His glory. Yes, everyone will have different gifts. So, we may summarize that to walk in Jesus' way is to live life in wisdom walk. Yes, step by step, using gifts to gifts, different life stages, different backgrounds, different nationalities, different races. Why diversity? Because it was God's idea to have diversity, for His glory. Do you know why there are divisions, conflicts, fights, and disunity among the so-called Christians? 1. We don't have true worshipers. There are many unregenerated, unsurrendered in name only Christians. By definition, there are no self-willed Jesus followers. You might not be perfect, in that you are a new creation, a saint who sometimes sin, but you no longer are sinners. True worshippers continue to repent, confess, as the Holy Spirit convicts to changing to become more like Jesus day by day. This is abiding in Christ with a posture of faith and obedience. 2. The enemies, Satan devils SD, secular world SW, and sinful nature SN distract and confuse us to forget God's mission. The biggest deception of all is to turn God's beautiful intention of diversity and the differences into disunity thus minimizing God's glory. How do you practically live out our union in Christ that unites us even in diversity? Die for the essentials and gave deference to the non-essentials. There are so many good resources and teachings that address the practical aspects of peacemaking, conflict resolution training, and more. My small contribution to this is birthed from my experiences seeing the differences as I try to raise a family in a multiracial society filled with conflicts. I see the differences between my children and the next generation. The need to celebrate diversity and have a deferential attitude that fosters unity and peace. Again, the challenge is to make it kiss, keep it simply short, for the enemies love to distract us from the main thing. Practically living out our union in Christ is our willingness to die for the non-negotiable doctrines of the basic tenets of your faith. Yes, if you must, on your knees praying with tears to fight for the essentials. The four fundamental questions help us focus on the essential core beliefs. If you want to be more specific, go to the more recent Gospel Coalition's confessional statement centered on the Gospel. Remember how our Lord Jesus debated with the religious leaders of His day? Jesus insisted on the unseen reality of the supernatural afterlife. He taught that materialistic naturalistic existence is not God's intention. He fought against human traditions and defended the Bible as the final authority. He warned about having religious traditions and not an abiding obedience relationship with Him. He defended the Trinity in that He is one with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Our union in Him unites us, followers, even in diversity. Finally, what gets us to unite in Christ is the Gospel. From the Westminster Confession of Faith, I would emphasize the effectual calling, our union with Christ, regeneration, sanctification, and glorification. Wisdom Walk is grounded in both the Westminster Confession and the Gospel Coalition.